guest today, Lynn Vassal, who joins me all the way from across the pond. In case you don't know what that is, that is England. How are you doing today, Linton? I'm doing great, thank you. Doing very well. How are you? Good, I'm good. So, Linton, we've got some amazing video of your training camp. Looks like you've been putting in a really tough training camp. Tell me a little bit about how training camp's been going. Yeah, honestly, training camp has been going great. I know, again, everyone says they've had the best camp and stuff, but um, I really feel we've changed a little few things up and I've sort of gone back um, to a little bit of the old way I used to train. Um, And again, Dr. Peacock, uh, my strength and conditioning coach, so we changed a few things up and with my striking coach, Henry Hooft, um, Sean Soriano, and my wrestling coach, um, Greg Jones, you know, we changed a few things up. In, um, in training, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, displaying um, what, I've been, what I've been doing different. You mentioned Dr. Corey Peacock, by the way, fans, he's a fantastic director at the Fight Science Institute yes. down here. Not that I'm taking anything away from Henry and Greg Jones, they are also amazing coaches and I love them both. Shout out to, uh, to both of those. Did Dr. Corey do anything specific that you hadn't, done before to incorporate into your training specifically for preparing for Sergey? Um, little things, well, I say little things, but yeah, we, we, we did a few things differently. I don't want to okay. let out all my secrets and stuff, <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he really, a lot of it was men- mental as well. So we did a lot of, lot of work pushing me through that extra, extra part, um, okay. you know, that, that I needed to, to break through, I, I feel. Okay. I sort of felt like I went backwards rather than forwards, especially in my, in my last fight. I know I can do better than that. Um, I should never gas in a fight. I don't think anyone should gas in a fight, especially if you've been preparing for a fight. You should, you should either get beaten because the guy's better than you, you know, not, not tiring now. Again, not taking up from um, okay. Modoski. You know, by that third round, I had nothing. He took me down and that was it. You know, I was on my back, you know. Um, that ain't gonna happen again, ever. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that because, you know, so many people don't understand the fact that also two different altitudes, maybe you have a sickness beforehand, maybe you had a bad weight cut, maybe you weren't mentally prepared. A lot of our fans don't understand that so much can happen before a fight and it just the day before or uh, an hour before that can affect yeah. affect our, 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 you know, the outcome of the fight. Exactly, yeah. So, um, you know, the stats say you have an eight-inch reach advantage over Sergey. So does that mean you're going to look to keep the fight standing then? Oh, of course. I'm definitely going to use use my reach. I think I'd be a fool not to, you know, use that and implicate that into the, into my fight. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be using my reach, um, my strength, power, takedowns. You know, I feel like I've I've got the package, the overall package to beat him. You know, I'm not just a striker. I'm not just a grappler. Um, I, I, I can mix it all up. How do you see the fight going down without giving away your secrets, by the way? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to finish him. Okay. I'm going to finish him. Good for you. We're looking forward to that. By the way, folks, that's Bellator 234. We're going to give you the uh, time and date at the end of the interview. Linton, yeah. I'm going to read you a quote from Instagram that I thought was very interesting that you recently po- posted. And I quote you, only dead fish go with the flow. I'm way stronger because I've had to be. So much smarter because of my mistakes. Happier because I've tasted sadness. But more confident and wiser because I've learned from my past. Can you talk to our viewers a little bit more about what you meant when you posted that on Instagram, please, sir? Um, I'd like to say, um, for for my mistakes, I've, I've definitely learned more. I've gone back, spoke to my coaches, and then you reevaluate it, and you know what I mean. You, you change. You have, you have to change some stuff in the, in the game. Um, you know, obviously, I, I want to win all my fights. You know, but um, when you do win, I feel like you also don't go back and say I did this wrong. You know, you won the fight, so it's congratulations. So um, you're. I feel like you do get stronger from from being at the bottom. Not said being at the bottom, but you know, from your from your falls, and then, and then you come back up, and you know. Um, fix, fix those mistakes, and I feel like that quote um, was perfect. You know what I mean? So I thought that you know I, I'll put that up and show people. You know what I mean? Just because you might be down in luck or something, or you win, lose, whatever. You know, it, it could be anything. You know what I mean? Um, you can come back from it. Yeah. 
I agree. And, you know, so much of the fight is mental. I often wonder how yeah. fighters, you know, when they're, when they're losing fights, you know, it, 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 would, it would play with my head. Uh, oh. If I kept on making mistakes on air, I'd probably be afraid to go back on air. And sometimes, in fact, you'll see TV producers and reporters where uh, you'll see outtakes where we're just break into hysterics and we can't really get our composure back. And all yeah. of a sudden, so, uh, so much of the fight game is mental uh, fight fans. You need to understand that. And it's really important for a fighter to be in a good place. And I'm so pleased, Linton, that you put that quote up because to me it shows that you're mentally prepared. And, of course, I wish you good luck. Um huh? Now I gotta ask you. I was, you know, I was darn. I was looking at your Instagram late last night. What is this thing with this new snake? Oh, you're a reptile lover, right? <laughs> yes, I do love reptiles. Um, that's not actually my snake. That 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 bird is it's not my snake. But I do own two snakes and two geckos. Um, but there's a reptile shop called the Jungle Florida in in Florida that I'm sponsored by, and I'm always in there. Um, so whenever they have a new, new reptile or, or something, I always go in, you know, um, and um, as I say, play with them. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I'm definitely a reptile guy. One day I'll have my own reptile shop. <laughs> really? That's interesting. I noticed at one point you were, I'm not sure, maybe it is the gecko, you were um, like petting it. Is that, is that, was that, was, was that the gecko? It was a brown and white animal. Oh, no, no. So, okay. So I put up a alligator. I had an alligator in my hand oh, in one of the posts. Um, the second post, it was a, a tegu and it was probably about, I'm going to say a couple of years old. Um, and then that's what I was, I was stroking. Okay. And then I had a, a Burmese python which yeah. was eight years old. Yeah, that um, Burmese so python yeah. is big. <laughs> I had two, I had a baby one, and then I had the, the adult. Have you always been a reptile lover? Um, I would probably say from the age of maybe 20, I'm probably going to say, like, it wasn't I didn't like them, but I looked after one of my friend's snakes, and then from there I was like, oh, you know, I, I want one. But at the time, I didn't have the time to get one. Um, so when I actually moved to Florida, sure, um, I found a reptile shop, and I was just like, might as well get one, and then <laughs> end up getting two. And I have four, four reptiles. I think that's a really interesting tidbit. I've known you for years down through the South Florida fights. I never knew that until I saw it on Instagram. So I, I can't sh tell you that I would be over at your house petting your reptiles, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll live vicariously <laughs> through you, but you put them up on Instagram. That's enough for me. Also, Linton, you are an ambassador for Fight for Autism. I know it's a project dear to your heart. Let's talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, so I've been um, ambassador now for a good maybe three to four years. With them, they, they approached me. Um, obviously, when I was living in England, and asked if I, you know, be an ambassador and help to um, raise awareness, um, obviously for, for their cause. So, you know, um, that, that's, that's what I've been doing um, for, the, for the last year, four years, I'd say. Okay, good for you. A great so cause, what, by the way. So what, they, so what they do is they do events um, in the UK as well, like people with autism. They, they can have MMA fights also as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, Linton, before we go today, is there anything else you want to add, sir? No, I'd just like to say, you know, I appreciate all the support and all the thanks um, from my supporters. Um, so, yeah, tune in and, and watch me um, fight in Tel Aviv. All right. All right, Fight Fans, you can catch Bellator 234 on Friday, November 15th. The main card goes down on both DAZN and the Paramount Network. Linton Vassal, good luck and thank you for taking the time to speak with me. No worries, thank you very much.